Welcome back to the AI Breakdown Brief, all the AI headline news you need in around five minutes. Today, we kick off with a little bit of a catch up on yesterday's main story. Of course, the biggest news of the week in this AI space is Meta's launch of Llama 3. They dropped two different Llama 3 models, the 8B and the 70B, with a 400 billion model promised in a couple of months. While we did anticipate this announcement, given that it had been teased last week, I don't think that most people thought that Meta was going to lean into it so much. It seemed like it might be the type of thing where they perhaps released one or two of these small models as little testers and tastes, an amused bouche, if you will, but instead they really leaned into it. Not only did Meta announce these Llama 3 models, they also built them into an updated overall Meta AI, which features much more prominently in the family of apps, including Messenger, WhatsApp, and Instagram. There's going to continue to be a lot to unpack. We barely got into, for example, all of those features that live inside the Meta suite of apps. But what I wanted to do in this brief is instead look at the first impressions of Llama 3 itself. By and large, they are very favorable. Aiden McLeod writes, I'm actually crying right now. Llama 3 is the most incredible model I've ever used. Holy shit, it's so cheap, so good, has so much personality. It's so fast. Thank you, Zuck. I doubted you. I'm so sorry. Now, on the one hand, I would have almost assumed that this was a joke and that it was someone who felt the reverse, but it seems to have been sincere. Perhaps somewhat less emotively, but no less excitedly, lots of people were showing performance comparisons. A chart that we had recently seen that was all about performance to cost ratio and which featured Mistral models very high in that shows that the Llama 3 8B chat and the Llama 3 8B models are also way up in that performance to cost ratio quadrant. And while the cost is higher, they also show that Llama 3 70B and 70B chat have performance that's off the charts relative to other open source models. Maxime Lebon writes, Llama 370B looks impressive, but the 8B instruct version is pure madness. It outperforms GPT 3.5, Claude 2, and Mistral Medium. This is on the Arena ELO graph. And if you zoom in, you see these Llama models getting up into the -the state-of-the-art territory in ways that are very impressive. And that, of course, has been another part of the conversation. What it means to have this model at open source. Menlo Ventures Didi writes, Meta's Llama 3 release is Spotsky's commoditize the complement at work cutting edge AI costs at Facebook below $5 billion and making $100 billion OpenAI and $1 trillion Google a commodity. Overnight, Facebook has a Google search competitor and owns distribution for a GPT-4 class LLM that attracts devs because it's open. Basically, the point here is that the fact that Meta has gotten to this level of performance in an open source package pretty fundamentally changes the nature of the game for these other bigger companies. Now, of course, we still have a lot of market learning to do to see what companies and buyers and developers are going to value. But what there's no doubt about, because we've seen it before, is that Meta leading the way on open source is absolutely going to suck a huge amount of talent, especially from a developer perspective, into their orbit. David A. Johnson posted a meme with the AI nerds looking away from OpenAI and Anthropic and towards Llama 3 and wrote, The importance of Llama 3 can't be understated. The race is to see how good free and open source software models can get before the ban in July. Llama 3 unlocks GPT-4 level quality, which even if the regime limits models from here, this is a very solid basis on which to build decentralized AI. Purdue PhD candidate Yaifei Hu writes, Why would anyone still choose GPT-3.5 Turbo API today? It's more expensive than Llama 3 or Mixtral 8x22b and has worse performance. And this again is showing the financial pressure that these new open source models are putting on the big players like OpenAI. Now, if you are one of those people who wants to just test this out yourself, Alex Northstar points out that you can try it in Perplexity Playground. This is one of Perplexity's less known features, but is a great way to test open source LLM models on the same prompts. The last thing that I've seen a lot of conversation about came from a section of the Dwarkesh podcast where Zuckerberg was on yesterday. Basically, Zuck talked about how Llama 3 was still learning when Meta decided to stop training it, and they were quite sure that it would have gone on training. The only reason they stopped training it is that they felt like they had to make a decision to cut it off somewhere so they could reallocate those GPUs to start testing for Llama 4. As McKay Wrigley puts it, AI scaling laws are insane. So all in all, a lot of continued excitement around Meta's Llama 3. I anticipate, of course, that by early next week, people who have spent a little bit more time hacking over the weekend with it will start to point out where perhaps it has issues or underwhelms. And I'll try to share that as well for a more rounded perspective. But right now, I think it's fair to say that Meta has done it again and that Llama 3 has put the attention firmly back in their orbit. Now, over in Google land, the company is consolidating its AI efforts in an attempt to focus and improve them. On Thursday, the company said it's consolidating teams that focus on AI across research and deep mind divisions. Reuters routes that Google will reallocate its responsible AI teams, which focus on safe AI development, from research to deep mind so that they're closer to where AI models are built and scaled. 
This is not the first time that Google has combined AI units. A year ago or so, it merged its two different research units focused on AI, Google Brain, and DeepMind. While that was likely painful internally in the short term, one of the big challenges that Google has faced in the past, not just in this area, but in other areas as well, is having basically competing efforts in different parts of the company, both going after ultimately scarce resources. It only makes sense now that they'd bring that responsible AI team to be closer to the main research team as well. In other words, my view is that this is the next step in a natural consolidation and focusing rather than something that indicates any sort of internal turmoil. Speaking of internal turmoil, one company that has seen its fair share of that is Stability. The company has lost lots of executives over the last few months, culminating, of course, with the stepping down of its CEO and board director, Imad Mostak. Now CNBC reports that the company is laying off about 10% or around 20 people from its company. That was not the only AI company to have layoffs this week. AI presentation tool Tome also laid off about 20% of its team. One that you know we will be talking more about in the future, the U.S. Air Force has confirmed its first successful AI dogfight. This actually happened last year, but DARPA has now confirmed that an AI-controlled jet, quote, successfully faced a human pilot during an in-air dogfight test carried out last year. Of course, as I pointed out lots of times, whatever the conversation about AI is in Washington, the military establishment is not waiting around to see what happens. Lastly, today, of course, was the release of Taylor Swift's newest album, a surprise double album, The Tortured Poets Department, and Wired pointed out that the leak that happened yesterday shows one of the new challenges that the world is going to face. In short, the problem with AI may not be that people fall for misinformation and disinformation and deepfakes. The problem may be that no one trusts anything to be real. Wired Magazine writes, When the Tortured Poets Department leaked, some Taylor Swift fans swore it must be AI. Expect that to be a common refrain. Anyways, interesting things to think about as you listen to the new albums this weekend. But for now, that is going to do it for the AI Breakdown Brief. Next up, the main AI breakdown.